opening hymn is hymn number 660. secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
prayed together the collect of the day found on page two in your order of worship. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, Who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, because they heard the voice, but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him to the, by the hand and brought him into Damascus. For three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. He answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man, man of Tarsus named Saul. At that moment he is praying, and he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his strength. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man and much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem, and here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I, whom I have chosen to bring my name before Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me that, so that you may regain your strength, your sight, and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the God, synagogue, saying, he is the Son of God, the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 30, found on page 3 in your order of worship. We will recite the psalm in unison. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. 
Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness, for his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They numbered myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, singing with full voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the sea under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them singing to the one seated on the throne and to the lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever and the four living creatures said amen and the elders fell down and worshiped the word of the lord thanks, thanks be to god, god. again to the disciples by the sea of Tiberias. 
and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there were Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of De Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you no you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there, with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Simon, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will fashion a belt around you and take you where you did not, do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. One of the things that I find believable about the Bible, and I believe 
the things which are said in the Bible. Maybe not exactly as they're said, but I, the general principle that's there. And I believe the Bible because it's filled with people like me and you and everybody else around here. We have the crazies like Peter, who are all gung-ho to do things and then kind of forget what they were supposed to do. And then those who are very stalwart and those who can answer God's call without any really trepidation. At least that's what they tell us in the Bible. And one of the things that I have found over the years is the thing that I call the paradox of faith. The paradox of faith, at least to me, are those things or activities which are best for the community and yet may not look like community building activities. There, were year, there was years ago when one of the leaders of a church felt a call to ordination and the church felt that it was important to send him out into the world to become a priest and to do all sorts of things that he was called to do even when that meant that they were sending away one of the pillars of their community. And what's ironic is that that is more empowering to the rest of the congregation than people care to admit. Or maybe the other thing that we, we know personally is that as we reach out, we look outside the doors and become more appealing. But it's not the care and maintenance of those who are in here that brings people to church. It's dealing with the people who are out there, which of course makes sense, because if they're in here, then we don't need to bring them in here. Or, in fact, most importantly these days is allowing humanity and allowing people to be humans who are in our midst is very empowering to those in our community in a world that demands perfection all the time, a place where we can simply be who we feel we are called to be is important. A challenge of our faith that we may feel at the intersection of faith and the world is making sacred sense of secular advice and practice. We all know the sayings that apply for all, and sometimes without regard to their source. Some friends of mine years ago used the phrase, that's what doesn't kill us, only proves to make us stronger. Yeah, that's a fun one to think about. Because, of course, that also means that we're going to go through pain and torture before we get to the far end. Or maybe we've heard somebody in our society say, knowing yourself is the first step to real growth. Or better, practice makes perfect. Scripture and the liturgical practice of our church help reinforce that latter adage more than we appreciate. Practice makes perfect. And I would say not that we will ever be perfect this side of heaven. The way we worship and the words that have been chosen help reinforce scripture and the truth of God that means something to us. Repeating the story helps us to not forget the eternal truths when those eternal truths butt up against society and the tensions which are all around us. Repeating the story helps to provide us hope when life seems hopeless. Today, I feel called that we should take a look at Peter and his interaction with the one who we know on this side of Easter and on this side of the Bible, and who they will find out is Jesus. In this story, we hear the touchstones for those in that moment, the things that reinforce what God has done and that Jesus has taught them. And one of the oddities that I find though as I was reading and preparing for this sermon is Peter, who will be heralded as the cornerstone of the Christian church, is the one who was having the most difficulty. Peter, 
who's the cornerstone of the church, is the most human of those of the disciples. And we know that Easter and the events leading to the resurrection, and also, I should say, in Holy Week, are filled with Peter. We remember the Peter of the story who, had, who pledged unwavering support for Christ and even denied in his time that he would thrice deny Jesus. And yet, as he was a being human and warming himself over a charcoal fire, he gave up on Jesus. And because of that, he was cut to the quick. So fast forward today, some number of weeks, and while we believe it's three, possibly because of our calendar, it's not certain how long has transpired between the crucifixion and today's story. Jesus met, Peter met Jesus and implicitly pledged unwavering support and commitment to his commission as leader of the Jesus movement. Today we see that commitment manifested in him and the disciples going back to what they did before they knew Jesus, faithful people that they are, they went and fished. And there's no explanation, it's just a declaration. Instead of fishing for men, Peter was simply a failing fisherman in today's story. As Jesus, and I believe that as Jesus, Peter feels he is failing because he has caught no fist, that nagging voice inside him may have said, you are crazy to believe in Jesus. Which then, of course, might lead him to lose hope. And in that moment, he finds his touch tone. Jesus is with him at that charcoal fire, preparing a meal for Peter and the disciples. I wonder, did Peter have a deja vu moment in that moment? At the charcoal fire, meeting Jesus again. I know that I would have. In this story, we hear that Peter has a confirmation and reiteration of his true calling in the thrice asked question. Do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than those random things that are around you, the boat, the fish, the things which you have amassed in your life? Do you love me more than these, those people that you are leading, those people who you call your friends and your disciples? Do you love me more than these? than the love that others have for me. Peter, asked, Peter is asked by Jesus three times, do you love me more than these? And Peter is cut to the quick again, because in that moment, Peter remembered his commission. In that moment, I hope and feel that Peter realized that he can get it wrong along the way, but as long as he tries to be God's witness, nothing that he does will be for naught. And that's not just a good story. It is the story of the gospel. It is the story that we carry with us as a touchstone for our day. And that story and the point of the story is that with God and Jesus, there is always hope. The good news is our messing up may not be a failure as long as we return to God through the touchstones of our life. This story applies for us today. We are given and have things and places that remind us of our mission. This church, the people that we have met and worshipped with and been friends with over our entire life. We are asked to shift from our pursuit of self-preservation, of doing what is comfortable, like those disciples did and went fishing, to that self-awareness of our place as people of God called into the world to be witnesses for God. 
by understanding how we work in God's economy. And that is how we allow ourselves to build connections with those who have different strengths, those who have different skills and abilities. Look around this room. Are we all alike? Thankfully, no. Because if, it were, if we were all alike, it would be a very boring place. We are called by God to surrender our self-importance, to make sure that we become more important, to make sure that we don't make ourselves more important than our mission. Because we are, in fact, perfectly made and called by God exactly as we are. Our story today helps us to remember that we need to learn and trust and be vulnerable. And that those two things, trust and vulnerability, are intertwined. As we go in God's, grow in God's grace, we remember God's promises and the risk that God made making a mistake by calling us and Peter and all the disciples. God invites us to be vulnerable so that God can allow us to be more accessible to those who are searching, even when they don't know what they're looking for. God challenges us to look outside ourselves and the things which we hold dear, to find new ways to relate to our community, to live in places where we can find new friends and invite our new friends to understand God at work in our lives and to extend ourselves without regard for others, their motives or methods, as long as they look for God. One of the things I believe that we have learned over the years is that those who come into our midst and are most empowering to us are least like us are least like us because, let's face it, how do we grow if we are all alike? God doesn't demand that we are perfect. God just demands that we be faithful. In the story that we heard of Peter, God reminds us that God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are already there, like Jesus on the beach, preparing breakfast, making preparations and waiting for us to respond to the call and to be present. Thankfully, God knows exactly what we are and being ourselves with all our warts and flaws and all is what God needs for us to be, to be faithful and to be willing to let God work in the things that we do because God is the one who is in control, feeding us and leading us forward helping us to remember that God is in control and that all of God's people, as fallible as they are, are brothers and sisters today and forever. Who is God inviting you to reach out and to look and to help in the, day, in the days that lie ahead? Only you and God know. Amen. 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 Please stand as you are able and turning to page six in your order of worship. <clears throat> Let us recite the Nicene Creed, our ancient confession of faith. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the People, Form 4. Let us pray for the Church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal in the glory of the, in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the way of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember those on our prayer list. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died that for your will, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. We stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Greet one another in the peace of Christ. Peace. Ascribe to the Lord the honor of his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
order of worship. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. To the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give God thanks, thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. salvation. 
by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Post-Communion prayer is found on page 9 in the order of worship. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. True Christ our Lord. Amen.
the peace of God who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. nothing else. Our closing hymn is hymn number 657.